Hi everyone, this is Liam Conroy um, with another instructional tutorial. So this one is um, over something kind of more interesting in terms of just being more of a definitely interactive uh, game. I know a lot of people try to look for interactive games that have educational value for students. And so this is one that was actually introduced to me by um, one of my students who actually helps design graphics for this particular game. So this is an in-browser game called mope.io. Um, so similar to, um, for those of us who in class who have used the draw.io model before, same kind of website format as far as the name. Um, so with this one, this game is really all about attempting to survive in varied environments. So depending on which environment you're in, you will encounter other types of animals or other players on the server for the most part, but I think there are also some that are controlled by um, computer players as well, um, and food in the form of like plants and other little things that you can try to eat, stay hydrated. Um, so it's a very simple look at concepts that you might look in biology, ecology, zoology, but it is a very, very, very simplified version of these types of events. So I would say this might be a good introductory thing as like an icebreaker to a particular unit or something along those lines. I would not say that this has the value to be like a really significantly deep thinking project. Um, this one does have a subreddit. So as far as I can tell, the subreddit is mostly devoted to talking about changes within the game um, and things that they're doing to adjust it. So <clears throat> when I look through these, um, again, the student who kind of linked me to this I think is a fairly key designer on it. So I actually have one of the graphics that he designed for this game, although he designed several. So here's a hawk. Um, again, it's done in a very specific kind of cartoony style. Um, but again, if you have a student who is interested both in art and in terms of looking at the natural world, this may be a good fit for them if they wanted to try and interact with this on a ground level and see about themselves contributing art to this particular game. I don't know how open or closed that particular area is, but if you have a student who is really devoted to that kind of craft, it might be something good to get them linked into. Okay, so looking here again, this is a game that I don't know the amount of regulation that it has for online interaction. So if we look at the settings here, the little gearbox next to where you can put your name in, um, it gives you the option to pick different regional servers. Again, I'm playing this one on a USA server, but this is at like 10 at night, so I don't know exactly how many people to expect to be on on here, but we'll take a look at it. Um, we'll take away um, names and chat. That way, hopefully, if there's anything that is significantly inappropriate, we won't end up seeing that when we're playing through. I'll go ahead and I'll put in my first and last name here. Let's just shorten it to the first name, actually. And we will go ahead and we'll start to play. So I've only ever played this once before um, at my student's suggestion. The main thing that we'll see as far as mechanics in this game, you will over time adapt, but the adaptation changes are major leaps um, that will totally transfer you into different environments depending on which path you pick. So I will attempt to play through this either until I die or start to run out of time as far as what Screencast-O-Matic can capture, whichever comes first. So we'll kind of analyze play as we go along. And we might talk about some of the things that students can look into um, as far as different parts that they could explore as far as questions about this type of game that you could have them answer. So let's hit play. Connecting to the game. Oh, and an ad. Great. So what it does let you do initially is try to pick between a few different base forms. Uh, as far as I can tell, your particular actions in the game don't influence what forms you will end up being able to utilize later on. I don't think it has anything to do with the idea of genetic material actually trans transferring between generations. It's a little more simplified than that, but it is still a very interesting game, and the variety of life forms that they've chosen for it I think is actually pretty darn impressive. Some of them are fictional, but they're quite a few um, normal animals as well. So let's go ahead. We can choose which animal to spawn as. So let's go with kind of the most basic unit. We'll go with a mouse. So here we are in a forest environment. 
and we are clicking, we're trying to move around and get to food in the environment. So a lot of the items that you can pick up are food. Um, you can kind of see at the bottom, I have a meter that is measuring water intake as well as my food intake to make sure that I'm eating stuff that will help me kind of progress to the next stage. Here I'm getting more water, keeping myself hydrated, trying to avoid larger predators. So um, you can see other animals in the environment. Again, I don't know how many of these are controlled by other people as opposed to whether or not they are parts of the game that are just normal parts of the game. So here I am kind of at a little place that has food, gaining a lot of experience in this area. It's a barrier here that I can't seem to cross. I'm not 100% sure what all of the environmental textures are supposed to represent. Some of them are pretty obvious like water. Um, and I think sometimes you can see that I'm able to move much faster here through the green, which I suspect is grass. The rest of it might be mud. There are holes that you can fall into in some areas. Doesn't look like there's lots of predators here, thankfully. Oh, it's a bird of prey coming in on my left. Getting some water. There's another bird of prey that I want to avoid. So the holes, I think certain organisms can utilize those holes to their benefit, but me right now as a mouse, I cannot. And my bar is almost full here. I want to see if I can find a little bit more food. Eh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to squeeze around these parts here. I have seen beehives in the game, and as far as I know, the bees don't seem to be player controlled, but they will keep stinging things if they come into that area. Okay, so now I can choose an upgrade. So let's pick something that belongs in a fairly different biome. So we'll pick an Arctic hair. So boom, I'm transported here into a more Arctic environment. Again, um, so it gives you the command, press W to burrow into a hole to hide in. So you can talk about, as far as when you get past a base form, you can talk about evolutionary advantages. So here I am hiding inside of a hole, and then I can come out. So you can talk about whenever you get past some of the base forms that some of these organisms do have special adaptations that help them survive in their environment and not have to deal as much with predators by comparison. So if I take my Arctic hair and I head south, what I will eventually find, so I'm here in this environment, perhaps it doesn't affect the hair as much as I thought it would. Sometimes when you move between different biomes, if you're not very well suited for them, you may find, oh, it's too hot for this organism, for another organism. And so it may be harder for, okay, so here we go. Now it's too hot outside of the Arctic, so it's too too difficult for the arctic hare that is adapted for one particular environment to live outside of that. So again, I would say that that's a pretty good example of talking about specialization within a certain environment. Ooh, I'm going to actually try for some of this food just to see if I can kind of level up. So you may even talk about risk reward with students in terms of how that would work in terms of an animal stretching outside of its range a little bit based on food availability. Because there wasn't much food available in the Arctic, I took a little bit of a detour there just to get some food resources further south. So, I mean, there are ways that you can look at this with a high level of analysis if you really try to stretch your imagination with it. But again, I don't know as how much application this would have for secondary students beyond just a very simple kind of approach to the concept of evolution and adaptations and survival. Let me try and create a little bit more food around here. And the other thing that I've noticed, there are certain foods that seem to spawn. They're specific, like all these mushrooms that we're bumping into. And to be honest, I'm not sure if you just have to be a certain organism to be able to utilize them. It may be kind of dependent on what you have in your suite as far as what you can use. Okay, got a little more food. As you can see, my water meter has not depleted so much that it's had to run out. It looks like... Oh, I tried, let me see, if I do the W function over the water, might be able to dive for a little bit. There I am doing the burrowing hole again. I just noticed that there was a command that I hadn't recognized before. Oh, there's possibly a polar bear that I need to get away from. I'm getting closer to adapting my organism here. Again, very simplified approach to this idea. And of course, on a time period like this where there doesn't seem to be a lot of people on the server, it might be easier for your organism to be able to rack up points without much danger. But the more that there are other people on the server, the higher the risk becomes for your animal. So especially if you have 
several students joining the same server, they may encounter one another. Okay, so let's take a look again. Let's go for an aquatic creature this time. We'll go for a crab. Okay, crabs can survive on dry land. On land, press W to go into your shell. So here I've got the ability to move through water or on land. So here I am on land in a while. Oh, here I am in my shell protecting myself. So again, if I think about the role of crabs naturally in the environment, um, it's kind of more of a scavenger perspective. Again, I'm not 100% certain which foods represent what when we're looking here inside of the environment. This may just all be aquatic food in general. I don't know if I'm in a position now where I can even attack other characters or not. It doesn't look like it. There are some predatory characters that are capable of doing it. So there was an orca that went through right there, but I'm safe up here on dry land away from the orca. So again, you can talk about adaptations like that, being able to move in and out of water and onto land, things of that nature. So I do think that it brings up good discussion points. Um, you could potentially devote either part of a day or a day to this type of lesson and ask students, you know, what types of adaptations actually helped you to survive in the environment? You know, it gives you the sense of urgency that a lot of other simulations of evolution don't necessarily give you. Um, other ones will tend to ooh, got sucked into a little whirlpool there. Um, other simulations may not give the same sense of urgency because you're not actively moving away from predators. And this one, I do kind of get more of that feeling, even though, like I said, at this particular hour, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of people on the server. Um, but again, if you have a group of students who are all participating in the same way, I think it's a good demonstration of that. So again, may need some planning on your own part for trying to think of how to best present this as a lesson to students. But again, I think it's phenomenal to have something like this that's kind of a neat little overview of evolution in a very general sense. Oh, looks like I can attack little guys. Um, and that gives students a chance to potentially interact with one another, interact with other students online. Um, it definitely gives some interesting abilities to kind of interact in a way that um, has them analyze just survival in general, helps teach some basic biology principles. Um, simplified, but a very fun interactive activity. I hope you enjoyed this quick little overview of it, and I will see you later.